Jesus' name, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. This shall be called a house of prayer, not a dinner feast. We are the house of prayer, not a dinner feast. This is a house of prayer, not a dinner feast. This is a house of prayer, not a dinner feast. As a church, as a church, we say, King, baptize us. Baptize us with fire this morning. Come on. As a church, baptize us with fire. Every spirit of offense. Go, 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 go. Baptize us in the Holy Spirit. Baptize us in fire. Baptize us in the Holy Spirit. Baptize us. Come on. As a church, we say, baptize us in the Holy Spirit. 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 Sing it, sing it. Baptize us in the Holy Spirit. Hey, hey. Baptize us in the Holy Spirit. Baptize us in fire. Baptize us in the Holy Spirit.
Baptize my heart with your fire. Baptize my heart with your fire. And desire come and baptize my heart. With your fire and desire, we'll sing that out loud. Come hey. and baptize my heart with your fire and desire. Come and baptize my heart with your fire.
slave for the sins of the world. Come on, we either serve him or we hate him. We either love him or we hate him. But we love him. We love him. So we give our lives to him. Amen. Come on. We love you, Jesus. I want to hear a shout of praise, a shout of honor, a shout of fear. Yes, 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 Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Come on. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Come on, this is Passion Church. Come on. This is Passion Church. We love our Jesus. We are not ashamed of the gospel. We are not ashamed of the gospel. Come on. We say yes to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We crucify ourselves and we follow him. We take up the cross. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We say, let there be a shout of victory. Let there be a shout of praise. Let there be a shout of victory. And all the church says yes. Let the be a shout of victory. Let the be a shout of praise. Let the be a shout of victory. Let the church say yes. The church say yes. The church say yes. Hey, the church say yes. Oh, the church say yes. Let the be a shout of victory. Let the be a shout of victory. Let the be a shout of praise. Let there be a shout of victory, and all the church says, Open up the gates, let there be a shout of victory. Come on, let there be a shout of victory. Come on, Holy Spirit, hey. Let there be a shout of victory, and all the church says, Yes, the church says, Yes, the church says, Yes. Come on, come into agreement with us. The church says, Yes, the sovereign God, the church says, Yes. As a church, we stand with Christ, who was crucified for the sins of the world, for freedom and all who are hungry, all who are weary, all who are laden. We come to you, Jesus, and we as the bride, as the church, we say yes to you, O oh God. We love our brothers and sisters, and we say yes to you, O oh God. There's a dying and a hurt and a broken world that needs the church. Come on, they need the church. So today we say yes, we will be the bride. We will be the spotless bride. We will be the church that shares love, forgiveness, healing. Come on. Hey.
<laughs> we say yes to you, Jesus. Oh, we say yes to you, Lord, the restorer of souls. <laughs> We say yes to you, Jesus, the lover of my soul. Hallelujah. <laughs> we say yes to the lover of my soul. We say yes to the Savior of the world. We say yes to the King of kings. And the Lord of Lords. <laughs> this morning, we say yes. Sing it hallelujah. Sing it hallelujah. Sing it hallelujah. Singing hallelujah. trumpet sounds when that trumpet sounds every knee shall bow when that trumpet sounds hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah
Lord, we seek you and we find you. Oh, we hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Lord, we seek you and we find you. Oh, we hunger and thirst for your righteousness.
shake up the fallow ground, God. Come on, church. Fallow ground. Break it up, God. Pray for your family. Pray for yourself. Come on, pray. Pray. Come on, church, pray. This is not a show. It's not a show. Come on, I'm asking you to bow your heads and pray. Come on, close your eyes and pray. Break, God. Break the fallow ground, God. Break the ground of offense. Break the, fa the ground of drug addiction. Break the ground of unbelief. Break the ground of religiosity, God. Somebody pray. Break it, God. Break it, God. By the anointing. Break the yoke, God. Break the yoke, God. Come on, church. Pray. 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 Jesus, we need you. Pray. Come on, pray. Jesus, break it up. Break up this heart of stone. Break up this heart of stone. Pray. Pray. Come on, make it personal. Make it personal. Break, break, break. The wells of revival. Come on, we all say the wells of revival. We gotta have revival, God. Send the rain. Send the rain in our life, God. Send the rain in our business, God. Send the rain in our family, God. Send the rain, God. The wells of revival. Pray for the rain to come. Come on, how many would pray for the Holy Ghost? The wells of revival. The wells of revival. Send the rain. Send the rain. How many are serious about that? Send the rain, God. Send the rain, God. Send the rain, God. I gotta do something right now. I feel the Lord calling people right now. I want with every eyes closed. Come on, every eye closed. Would y'all give me a little bit of just a moment of every eye closed? Come on, come on. If you're here, I'm hearing in the spirit some things. If you're here and you're tired of being bound, you're here and you're tired of the spirit of offense, you're tired of the spirit of addiction, you're tired, listen, you're here and there's, I feel this in my spirit, somebody we love just, just died, okay? You're here there's someone there's people here that God has brought you and you're literally at the point of death and you know it and it may, may, may not be you but I'm going to call out several things okay you're here and you know that on the inside things are not right things are broken things are damaged and you know that as for you and your family it's about to run off the road and hit a telephone pole come on there's things going on in your life there's depression going on in your life. There is a, a spirit of witchcraft in your life. There is a, there's a deceiving spirit in your life. Don't make it about somebody else in this moment. The Lord said that you would make it a personal thing because it's wrong with all of us, but we personally have to own up to our own stuff. And so I'm calling you to this altar right now. I don't care who you are. If you're here and you're like, you know what? I'm tired of the depression. I'm tired of the oppression. I'm tired of the addiction. I'm tired of this offense trying to get on me. Whatever it is, whatever it is, I'm calling the church. Come on, guys. That we would be a church of repentance. Where we're unashamed of what people think about us. And we're, we're bold enough to come forward right now. Because God said it, it's time, and even from the leadership, from me all the way down, that it's time to get rid of the praise of man. And it's time to start seeking the the praise that comes from God. And I'm asking you, if that's you, come on down to the front right now. Come on, I'm going to just wait. We're going to sing for me. I'm going to wait. And I want you to come down, and I'm going to come down with you. Come on. Because everybody, come on, we got to be a heart of repentance, man. we got to be the kind of church that says, we're not going to let the that monkey get on my back. Come on, I'm going I'm to shake the hater off this morning. Come on. Come on, I'm asking you guys. Come on, how many would join me in the altar right now? We're going to say, you know what? I don't know. I've tried a lot of stuff, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try Jesus right now. Come on. I want to try to throw my life completely into Jesus. I want to completely pick up a cross and see what happens. How many would that be you? Come on, I want you to come down here. I want you to come down here. Come on. 
Come on, y'all come close. Y'all come close. Miss my friends and family. Come on, y'all. Y'all come close. Come on. We're, we're not, the, we're, we, how many know we're the same? We're the same. We're battling the same kind of stuff. Amen. And, and so my heart just breaks for this, this stuff right now. And I want to thank God for the people that had the guts to come down to this altar right now. And if you didn't, that's all right. You pray where you're at. God will meet you where you're at. Amen. And I want you to pray with me, guys. I want you to pray with me with all of the, your spirit that you can muster right now. Say, Lord Jesus, help me. Come on, ask him, Lord Jesus, help me. I don't want to go off the cliff. I don't want to end badly. Say, Jesus, I'm here calling on you. I need deliverance. I need help. I don't want to make it about somebody else. It's about me and you, Jesus. Jesus, forgive me. Unhook me from the cravings of a sinful nature. I don't want to be a beast, God. I want to be a child of God. Come on, I want you to picture this. God, I want to be free in every way. There's none perfect before you, God. Come on, say it. You don't have any favorites, God. So I want freedom. I want freedom. Say it with me. Lord, you took the veil away. So that means right now there's no blinder. Say it. I want to look right at you, Jesus, right now. Come on. Come on. Jesus, we come to you. Help us. Help us. Help us. Help me. Somebody ask him to help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to pick up a cross, to die to myself, to live with you, Jesus. I don't want to make it about religion. Say it. I don't want to make it about other people, about man-made tradition. And I, I feel like in the spirit realm right now, there's somebody here you were offended by your father. There's somebody here you were offended by your mother. There's a family offense. I feel like there's somebody here that you just can't break loose, but Jesus says, give it to me. And don't stop giving it to me. Don't stop knocking on the door. Because if you knock and you keep on knocking, the door will be open. If you ask and keep on asking, the question will be answered. If you seek and keep on seeking, then what you're seeking you will find. Have you not always found what you were seeking? Now seek me, says the Lord, and I will be found by you when you seek me with all of your heart. Come on, just stay where you're at. Let's worship. Let's worship. Keep going, Reese. Let's worship. Let's worship. Jesus. Jesus, just get low. Just humble. Had we find you. Oh, we hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Lord, we seek you, and we find you. Come on. Oh, we hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Oh, so break, break, break this fire. Break the fallow ground. Break it up, God. That's in me. Break it up, God. Oh, break, break. Take away the stony heart, God. Oh, break, break, break this Come on, it's not about perfection, guys. Break up the stony heart. Break, 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 break Jesus, help us. Close the shop that break, 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 break it. Come on, don't stop. Break, break. Come on, don't give up. Come on. Break it, God. Break it up, God. Break. Break. Jesus. Jesus. Break. 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 Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us. God have mercy and pray. Pray, pray. Pray, have mercy. Mercy. Keep it going. Pray. 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 it up, God. Give me a heart of flesh, God. Jesus. 
Hey, I know we're being repetitive. Can we do one more time? Spring up the wells of revival. See, some people don't realize that we're here, we're here for a reason today. We're, we're, I mean, come on, put up your fist. We're here to fight. We're here to fight. This is not a... Come on, how many know that we're going to... with it? Sometimes when you're pressing for the more of God, the fullness of God, that enemy's going to fight you on that. Amen? How many believe you have a calling in this room? I'm serious. I'm serious right now. You realize you have a calling right now. Come on, let's, let's declare, spring up the wells of revival. Come on. Put your hand on your belly. Come on, do it. Jesus said, out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. Come on, do it. Put your hand on your belly. Come on, come on. Come on, do it. Send the rain out. Break up the wells, God. Send up. Spring forth. Spring it forth. Spring it forth. Spring it forth. Send the rain. Send the rain. Something's happening right now. Come on. Spring forth. Revival. Reviving from the dead. Send the rain. Send the rain. The wells of revival. Come on. The wells of revival. Send the rain, God. Send the rain. Jesus. Jesus. Send the rain. Send the rain. Send the rain. Jesus. Send the rain. That's our prayer. Jesus. Send the rain. Come on, I want my prayer team to run up and pray for everybody in the altar. Come on, prayer team, come and pray for everybody in the altar. We'll do it quick. We're not going to be here all day doing it, but I want to, someone, someone to touch everyone on the altar. Is that okay? Is that okay? Real quick, come on. Break, break, break the 
this power. Come on. Go. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Spring for, spring for the wells of revival. Spring for the wells of revival. Send the rain, send the rain, send the rain. Spring for the wells of revival. Spring for the wells of revival. Send the rain, send the rain. Come on, let's keep praying that for a minute. Send the rain, God. Spring for the wells of Jesus. revival. Let it rain. Spring for the wells of revival. Send the rain. Send the rain. Send the rain. Come on, go a little bit longer. Something's happening. Spring for the wells of Spring for the wells of revival. Spring for the wells of revival. Send the rain. Jesus, spring forth in me, spring forth in my family, spring forth in my church. Come on, come on, spring forth in warm hands and warm hearts, church. Come on, spring forth, spring forth, spring forth. Come on, pray, church, pray. Spring forth, the wells of revival. In the rain. It's in the rain. This is where it's at, guys. We gotta seek God. Revival. Reviving from the dead. In the rain. In the rain. Spring forward. Jesus. Spring forward. Living water. Come on, come on, every voice. Breakthrough, breakthrough, send the rain. We're not gonna let go. We're not gonna let go. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. I feel like something's shifting in the room. How many has ever done this this long? How many have you ever like, I feel like God's saying what you see right now is what has to happen in your life every day. What you see right now is not an event. Like somebody get mad, they might be a visitor here, might get mad and say, well, I'm not going to Passion Church because they made me feel weird when everybody walked up front. Guys, this is about life and death. Amen. Amen. To hell with religion. Yeah. To heaven with relationship. Listen, guys, people are in a battle. People are in a battle. Amen? Amen. You're not going to get breakthrough without prayer. Where's the, where, where's the praying church? Where's the praying church? And there are Christians, man. There are people that are like, well, I don't know about all that warfare. I don't know about all those, those people in church, and some of them are weird. Well, some of them are going to be dead tomorrow if they don't find Jesus today. That's not a joke, guys. I think people don't understand this is not about us being comfortable and pretty as Christians. We're so egotistical in this nation. To hell with the praise of men. Come on. To heaven with the praise of God. We've got to turn it around, guys. We've got to turn it around. And you've got to get around people that are ornery enough to believe God. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Don't just go hanging around with people that are talking a bunch of crap. Amen? Get around people that talk faith. People that talk about loyalty. People that talk about honor. Am I talking to somebody? Come on, man. Jesus. I feel like something very significant is happening right now. But I have a word for you. If you're seeing this happen, and you might even think, man, it's a little extreme. This is what it takes to break alcoholism. This is what it takes to break crack addiction. This is what it takes to break porn addiction. Man, I think somebody needs to listen to what I'm trying to say. Maybe the Lord's trying to say something. What if you sought the Lord every day of your life and God radically changed your life as a result of that? 
tell me there's not a, a hope on the inside of you where you feel like there's a calling. There's a calling. There's a calling inside of you. Don't let it, don't let it end up in the graveyard without ever being fulfilled. That's a, that's a, that's a conviction that I have. I have a, such a conviction of that. Amen. Will you please, will you please give somebody a high five or a hug? Tell them you love them before you go back. Amen. How many have felt like you've been under some kind of warfare lately, some kind of attack? It's okay. We're not always in warfare mode, but do you know when you're in warfare mode is whenever you're going forward. You're going to the, the next level. Amen. The devil hates your family. He hates, he hates your relationships. How many know that the most important relationships in your life are the ones that you get offended at the most? Can we say that? Not everybody's saying amen on that, but we came to battle today. Because the devil will tell you, what about they did this and they did that? Well, the reality is they did some, they might have done some things wrong, but, but, but the unforgiveness is killing you. Amen? Does that make sense? Here we are in the middle of the summer, the lazy months, and I just see the God making war for people. Amazing things are happening right now. We had God do an amazing restoration to some very dear friends of mine. Do you know that if the devil can't, can't, can't catch you slipping, then he'll make stuff up about you. He'll, make, he'll straight make stuff up about you. So we don't want the devil to steal God's testimony. Amen? How many have a testimony? Come on, don't let the devil, don't let the devil take that. Come on, give God a praise. Don't let the devil take the testimony. That's for real. All right. So God is leading us to not depend on the praise of man. There's some prophetic words that I got this morning, very strong. Uh, be careful because you're in a testing right now, some of you, with, do people like me? Am I talking to anybody? Like, do they like me? Do they don't like me? And people get out of the word of God because we're worried about somebody liking us. Amen? And the enemy capitalizes on a false love. Am I right? And I told someone recently, you cannot prove to me that I don't love you. You can't tell me that I don't love you. You have no proof of that. And somebody said, yeah, he found you in your house, and he's been here with you for four hours, so you obviously can't prove that he doesn't love you. Now, if, I can just, if I'm just going to preach at you and I, don't come, and I don't care about you, that's different. But if you see somebody showing up at your house, come on, man. Now, I'm, don't tell me, don't get me wrong, the devil will show up at your house too. I mean, religion will show up too, but at least they have the good sense. Amen? You all okay? How do we do this? Real quick, uh, let me get, is Seth around? I want Seth to do this uh, because it's really important because the Lord talked to me about a spirit of death. And, uh, and then Seth, uh, well, first of all, I knew there were a couple of things going wrong with people. And then Seth said it and it confirmed some things. So I want him to tell you really quick and for one reason so the people realize that nobody's perfect. Amen. Like, like and what I'm saying is the enemy can come, will come after you. And religion will tell you, oh, maintain a good face so your, your Facebook profile isn't tarnished. You know, we don't want the church to look bad to the world. God's dealing with something right now. Y'all know what I'm saying, right? So sometimes stuff happens. This man's bold enough to say what happened, but... Uh, Remember that prayer is the only way to fix this. So uh, I watched the spirit of offense move through the whole church. Um, years ago, I, I got offended and I left. And I carried it with me everywhere that I went. And then I came back and confronted it here. And it was me. It wasn't the church. It was me or the spirit of offense. So Friday, I got back from out of town and uh, showed up at the church. And immediately when I walked in the door, I got depressed. Didn't feel worthy enough to grab the microphone. Didn't feel, just all I could do is pray. Just sit right there and pray while I left. And everybody's asking me, I'm okay, I'm okay. Well, then me and my wife get in, uh, in a disagreement. And I got offended. To the degree that I said, maybe I'll just choke in my sleep and die. So then I couldn't, then Saturday, Friday night, <clears throat> I had tormenting dreams. I'm not going to tell what the dreams are about, but they weren't good. And I couldn't... Well, I had dreams of needles and dope and, and stuff for hours and hours and hours. And every time I would try to get out of bed, I couldn't get up. I would just go back to sleep. And I slept till 4 p.m. Saturday. And finally, I, I just felt like the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit said, get up. The moment I got up and started moving and left my house, it started breaking off of me. And then when I came to church, 
Something rang in my ear what Donna told me at prayer one night on Friday night to scream the name of Jesus. And the moment I screamed the name of Jesus, everything had to break off of me. And then I had to start repenting for my attitude and for the things that I did because when I let the Spirit get on me, then I started to act improperly. And then this morning, something else tried to get on me, a spirit of religion. I went to somebody's house this morning and they started telling me that I'm not following the right way, that their religion is the only right way. And I said, I'm not going to argue with you because I love you and I care about you. But the enemy's trying to attack each and every individual here because we are one unified body of Christ. And if he can cause an offense and get a group of people to, to, uh, to uh, uh, agree with that offense, well, then he can divide the whole church. So I had to share that. Thank you for sharing that. Hey, why don't we do it right now on the count of three? Scream the name of Jesus. You ready? One, two, three. Jesus! It's like somebody probably got offended about that right just now with that. Let's do it again. One, two, three. Jesus! Don't stop. Jesus! 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 Come on, come on, come on. We pledge our allegiance to Jesus. We pledge our allegiance to Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come on, get wild. Jesus. your fire fall. Wow. Man, I swear I felt something break through just now. Like, and somebody, you know, you could think, you could think, well, I don't want to shout Jesus' name right now, but just because you decided to do what you didn't want to do because it was unity, see, that's a principle, it's a kingdom dynamic. It's a kingdom dynamic. See, there's, there's, there, there's keys to the supernatural that people don't understand because they've never walked in the supernatural. Does that make sense? And so it's not that it's unwise or silly. And I'm not saying if you went to a church and everybody screamed in tongues, I'm not saying that may, may or may not have been God. Were you seeing signs and wonders, miracles, deliverance? Were you seeing healing and salvation? Because if not, there's no authority in it. Okay, y'all getting quiet. I'm sorry to come hard on Sunday. But I'm saying so, so just because the silly stuff that you saw, were there results Y'all have learned that from this church, right? Come on, come on. You know a tree by its fruit. Is there fruit on the tree? Come on. Jesus said you'd know the tree by the fruit, amen? So don't let the devil lie to you, man. If you got fruit hanging, you know what I'm saying? The devil will come and whisper in your ear and be like, you need to get out of my ear, snake. Amen? <laughs> amen? Good Lord. Come on, give God a mighty shout of praise. We're not going to let the devil put a bad, a bad vent on the church. Come on, the church is a place of celebration and joy. The church is a place where you might have to get down and dirty and fight, but there's freedom in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. The key to walking in strength and wisdom and the wisdom of God is what? Yieldedness. The key to walking in strength and wisdom is yieldedness. You're not going to succeed without the power of the Holy Ghost, the prophetic fire, but you've got to put that with the wisdom of God. Amen? Wisdom. Somebody shout wisdom. Wisdom of God and, and, and the power of God. Amen. The wisdom and the power. Before we get on the highway and move, we must yield. Y'all ever, ever come to a yield sign? I mean, you got to like, look. I mean, I, you know, you got to yield. Amen. We have to learn to yield to the Holy Ghost. Amen. amen. How many know that God's teaching us to yield to the Spirit? Yield to the Spirit. It's not my way. Come on. Yield to the Holy Spirit. How many believe that there's a deeper place with God? I don't care if this is day one for you. You need to know. There's a, take another step in the river. Come on. Come on. If you're ankle deep, go knee deep. If you think you're doing something with that, then go waist deep. If you think you're really doing something, then get over your head finally. Come on. Amen. Get over yourself and go all the way in God. Amen. Somebody give him a shout of praise, would you? Yeah. Number one, shout out with me, leadership. Yeah. Leadership is the key to any successful dream. The key to any successful dream. You can do nothing without leadership. You can do nothing, and you don't. And, 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 and only till recently have you even heard teaching about leadership. And it's sad that there's people that know nothing about the Holy Ghost but teach leadership and can have big, huge ministries. I don't, I'm walking the line right now, but there's no fire. But how much more should the people that love the fire of the Holy Spirit walk in wisdom and not silliness? Amen. Come on, somebody, give me, help me out. Help me out here. So we've all we're all leading someone currently. Am I wrong? 
Someone's, especially now with Facebook, come on, everybody sees everything, man. What are you leading others to do? They, they ask uh, at West Point, they ask what was one of the, one of the keys. Uh, John Maxwell uh, asked, asked one of the teachers generals at West Point, and they said that leading by example. One of the top schools in the nation. Lead by example. Amen. So what, are you, what is your life saying to your children? Nothing great happens without leadership. Do you feel called to greatness? Come on. That's why God called you to this church. Because you're not in a church where somebody will control you and limit you because of, because of insecurities and fears that maybe you're more spiritual than the pastor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're talking real today. I'm, I, maybe I'll talk on this side. Well, we'll get on this side and talk and say that stuff. Well, you're not coming to a church that's like, come to the ministry of a pastor. Some of y'all don't understand how to value that because you've come to your ministry. You've come to your ministry. Please understand what I'm saying. If God drew you here, I want to come alongside you as a preacher, you as a, you as a disciple maker. Come on, does that make sense? You can have large crowds, but if they're not going anywhere, then it's just a pile of flattery. Leadership starts with oneself. This is John said this, Maxwell. Leadership starts with oneself, and then, it, and well, actually, I morphed it. <laughs> leadership starts with oneself, but then extends to your family. What's going on in your home? Whatever's going on in your home is what you really believe. You say, well, Kyle, you're whipping me this morning. Well, no, I'm not. I'm trying to say this because if all hell's breaking loose in your life, then you've got to figure out what you really believe. And the way you know what you really believe is are you even teaching it to the little ones around you? Because you tell people what you believe. You tell them what you believe. I was into skateboarding when I was a kid, and I believed in it so much that that's all I knew about was skateboarding. 360 kick flips, man. Uh, shove it. I mean, all I would talk about is how a whole dude had a face plant trying to ollie over the gap. I mean, and so that was my language. You don't even know what I'm saying unless some of you, how many of you know what I'm saying? Raise your hand. And I'm, I'm like, so would you, you know, you talk about what you love. Amen. How many are talking about Jesus to your people? And so in leadership, there's authority. Somebody say authority. Don't tell me it's something that you don't do because you don't have no authority with me. You don't do it. I'm not saying you got to be a drug addict, to, an ex-drug addict to speak to, to addicts. I'm not using it that way. And I know y'all know that. But I'm saying, like, if I haven't been delivered, come on, then there's no deliverance here. If you go to a church, you need to find out, did that pastor ever get delivered? Okay, I know. I'm preaching to the choir. Y'all already know that stuff. Number two, ready? <laughs> Before I move on, I want to say something. My, the Spirit of God is grieving. And He's also joyful. And He's also many things. But let me say this. Is that we have a, a man that came to this church, and, he, he, and he, he, he cried loudly. His name is Jesse. And he cried through the whole service. He, 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 he wailed through the service and cried. And he came to, and, and to the services. He cried. Through, I've never followed somebody from the altar all the way back to the van. And I followed him both times. I didn't know what it was, but I just followed him all the way to the van both times. And it's like he didn't even want to get on. He just wanted to stay and talk. I, just wanted to, I, didn't, I didn't know what it was. I felt drawn to him. He's dead now. He has family. And I think sometimes the North American church forgets about what the church is about. The church is not about egos of Christians looking pretty. The church is about helping people that are dying. And listen, we can ignore the death happening in Pakistan right now. We can ignore the death happening in, in, in different areas of the world. We can ignore it, but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Does that make sense? And I'm not just talking about on the streets and stuff like that. I'm talking about people, uh, uh, professionals that are, that are doing coke and nobody knows. And they're cheating on their spouses and, they're go and, they're, and their whole family's going down the drain. There's a lot of death going on. Amen. So realize this is that you need to come to a church that will actually confront that situation and not allow. To, I don't, I'm not talking about judging others, but I'm talking about this willing to pray like there ain't no tomorrow. Y'all understand what I'm trying to say? Willing to fast and pray and seek God even knowing there's imperfection. Amen. Does that make any sense? So number two, can y'all say it with me again? When you come under authority, you come into authority. That's a kingdom dynamic. I didn't invent that. God did. Say it with me. God tries to save us from our own pride. Why do I come under authority to come into true authority? Because God is trying to save us from our most biggest enemy, our own pride. Look what I have done. Look what me and Jesus have done. We've done all these things. No, you and Jesus ain't done squat. If you didn't have people praying before you, you wouldn't even got saved today. And that church you don't like is the reason why you're saved. I want to be careful. 
<laughs> God help us. So how do I know that? Because I'm, I'm like the guinea pig, you know, like the pastors and, and, and worship leaders. Like here, our life is right here for you to pick it apart, for you to see it. We don't see people hiding behind their closed doors what you do, but you do see what we do. Does that make sense? And so I'm saying that for a reason. It's like God, God wants to save us from our pride because he knows us in our future. And we always think it's all dreamy in our future, but it's not, man. It's not always dreaming in our future. The devil, uh, Jesus told Peter, the devil is desiring to sift you like wheat, but I prayed for you. So here's how the kingdom works. We're going to throw this up on the big screen so I can see it. I'm having an issue with my, my, my prescription and my glasses. It's kind of strange because I can, hear, I can hear an ant fart from a mile away. My hearing is good. I don't know what the deal is. I could hear the kids whispering about me in their room like 20, 30 feet away. Like, I heard that. Like, what? <laughs> Supernatural hearing. Can't see where the crud, though. Go to the verse. You ready? Matthew 8. Can y'all say it with me? Lord. Okay, so this is a situation where Jesus is going to go, and he's, the centurions come and ask him to pray for his servant. Say with me, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. Somebody say demonization. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. Then the centurion answered him and said, Lord, I am not worthy. Wow. He's dealing with his own pride. Step one. I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word, and my servant will be healed. Next word. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. Wait, what's he talking about authority for? Somehow this man understands the, the way that God operates is through authority. He says, I also am a man under authority, having soldiers. Somebody say soldiers. Under me. And I saw this one. I, I say to this one, go. And he goes to another, come. And he comes. And to my servant, do this. And he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. And he said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith in the entire country of Israel. Why, what, do you know that Israel is also a parallel to the church? And I'm not talking about removing Israel so that you can use the church. I don't do replacement theology. God still has promises for Israel. That's idiocy. But how many know that God's going to save Israel? But read this next part. For I also am a man under authority. I don't know what just happened. I also am a man under authority, having soldiers. Oh, yeah, go to the next verse. You had it right. The trick of me, man. I'll get you back later. And I say, that's a joke. And I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness, into hell. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Dude, why are we talking about hell, Jesus? Because hell's a reality. Dude, people only want to preach the fuzzy stuff. Like, I, if I were you, I would want to know about it all, you know. Do you know the way that I got saved? God preached hell to me at a party. At a party. And I was a pill-popping maniac, dude. And I was about to, you know, be on my way. I had just woke up about 1030. And I probably ate a couple of lore sets. And I wasn't really awake yet. I wasn't higher or nothing. I was just trying to keep from being dope sick. Does anybody understand me right now? And so all of a sudden, the Lord began to speak to me. You're on your way to hell. And it wasn't because I took a pill. It was because of a lifestyle that I was living without Jesus. And if you would have known me back then, and if you would have said something about hell, I would have scoffed at you and laughed at you and quoted Scripture back to you. I was bad. I was bad off, man. I knew the Scripture. I was reprobate. And then God spoke to me and revealed to me hell, and he wouldn't leave me alone about hell. He wouldn't leave me alone about it. And here's Jesus saying, look, I want you to understand this man has such a great faith. Y'all capture this. He has such a great faith because he understands that the kingdom of God is about authority. Authority. Can somebody give God a shout of praise? Yeah. To understand the way God's kingdom works, you must understand spiritual authority. Never allow somebody to have authority over you and to limit you from your calling. Never allow authority to be a controlling factor in your life. We are not allowed to control people. We are not allowed to tell them what God said for them. That is completely off the, off the, uh, off the rails. Am I getting a witness with this? A person who respects, who respects no one is respected by no one. You think, oh, I, I, I know I'm going to get on some toes. I haven't seen anybody say this on Facebook. Don't get offended. Because everybody's offended at me right now, so I'm sorry. But if, if, you, if you get on Facebook and you say, I say whatever I want, I don't have no filter. Well, that's stupid. Because now everybody say whatever they want about you. And you're walking around all oh, man, well, I can't believe they're talking about me. Well, you're talking about them. You reap what you sow. God is not mocked. 
So if you're running around disrespecting everybody, everybody's going to disrespect you. And you don't respect the authority that other people have in the other businesses, like the business you have, then nobody's going to respect you. And they're going to talk about you behind your back. And you're like, I don't know what's going on. God's like, I'm trying to save you from your pride. A person's level of respect is gauged by what they will or will not say about someone else. Number three, ready? There's a connection, say, there's a connection between the way we treat God and the way we treat man. There's a parallel because you say we say all these great things about how much we love God, but you don't see God. But you see God every time you look at your brother and sister, but yet you mistreat them. Amen. God, God, our love for God can be seen by our love for people. Are you having a love problem? That's okay if you are because nobody's perfect, but let the Holy Spirit lead you. Amen. First John 420. If someone says, I love God, hates his brother, he's a liar. Wow, John, that's pretty strong. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he's not seen? Man, I'm telling you, that's a powerful word right there. That will save somebody's life because it will cause the Christian to be unhardened and, and, and step off of the, 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 the pride and get low in love, and that will save someone else. No one can be saved without the leaders. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, I wasn't saved in a church. It was whenever the 700 Club came on. Well, that was a leader. Well, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm tired of the church. I just follow this evangelist over here. Well, that evangelist doesn't exist without a church at some point in time that reached somebody, that, that helped somebody, that got mad and ran off with the anointing and talked about the church and still reaching souls and putting that offense on everybody else. That's a big old mess, ain't it? God told me one time if I waited for perfect people, I'd be waiting forever. That's why he's using me. <laughs> Somebody say thank God. <laughs> our repentance to God can be seen by our repentance to man. Our desire to, and now listen, I'm saying that we're not going to repent. I'm not going to repent to you for telling you what the Bible says that you didn't want to hear. That's not the same thing. Oh, let me, let, me, let me meddle right there for a second. See, people need to understand that if, you're, if, you, if you don't have the guts to tell your brother what they need to hear, then their blood is on your hands when they die because of cowardice. But yet at the same time, if you don't have any love for that person, you don't need to talk to them at all. That's a real, that's a real story. They'll know that you love. They'll know. They won't care what you know when they know that you care. Our desire to build and maintain relationships must be greater than our desire to be right. Watch this. The Lord, I feel like the Lord told me this. The more our identity comes from our performance, the more unwilling we are to appear wrong. I have known people in my life that do not repent of anything. I've never heard them repent of anything. And it's like they're so caught up in being right. Does that make sense? That they will not, they can't, they can't say I'm sorry because then that makes me wrong. Church, I've had to say that I'm sorry. And people can say, well, that, 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 that dumb pastor, he's making mistakes. I'll go to some other church that's better than that. Well, there's the door. Because I don't want to have a hypocritical church where we don't admit we've done wrong. Does that make sense? Hypocrite means two faces. It means you see this face, but there's also this other face you don't see. Number four, you ready? So the more our identity comes from our performance, the more unwilling we are to be, uh, be wrong. Number four, amen, I, pr I appreciate that. Number four, can y'all say it with me? It's impossible to lead without following. Now, I'm, I want to deal with something. I'm hearing a lot in the leadership uh, training and talks about this. Uh, you can't lead others till you learn to lead yourself. But I always have a, red, a warning about this because you don't lead with yourself without following Jesus. You are not the maker of yourself. The Bible said that God is our maker, not we ourselves. Amen. Is that right? That's very, very different. That's why the best leaders spend time with Jesus in his word and his presence every day and say yes to him even when it hurts. It doesn't, I didn't say they were perfect, but we, we don't say, well, this part of the Bible we don't believe in. Well, that's a different Jesus. You, you have perverted the gospel, and that gospel is not going to help anybody that needs help in the area that you have blotted out. So now you become a stumbling stone. And Jesus said, it's, it's worse for you, it's better for you to have a millstone tied around your neck and cast into the sea that you should make a little one stumble. So if I stand for something that God doesn't, I am a stumbling block. 
to the little ones. What are the little ones? The little ones, see, the devil attacks little ones. Many of you in this room were attacked as a child because you didn't know enough. Amen? You didn't know enough to protect yourself. Does that make sense? A little one is a new person that hasn't grown in the word, and they're not strong enough. Uh, we saw a baby deer uh, dead in the road uh, the other day. And I, and I thought for a second, it's the, the, and I said this to Gary, and I was like, the, the little ones get run over it easier because they don't know. They don't know how to, how to watch out. There's a truck coming. Let me wait. Let me go. Do you know what I'm saying? Is this helping anybody? Ignorance is not bliss. It sets us up to be killed. Spiritual death. It's impossible to leave without following. Is this right? 2 Corinthians 3, 17 through 18. Can y'all say it would be, now the Lord is the Spirit. Can we stop right there? How well acquainted are you with the Holy Spirit? Are you baptized in the Holy Spirit? Throw away religious doctrine and ask yourself a very plain and simple question. Am I doing Bible stuff and getting Bible results? Do I know that Holy Spirit that Peter knew? Do I see healing like Peter and John saw? Do I, do I see the things? Come on. Come on. Have I ever heard God speak? Come on. Because they did in the Bible. And, and, and the Bible said that he who is least in the kingdom is greater than John. In other words, that people today, Christians, should have the spirit of prophecy. You should accidentally prophesy. Not prophesy, but you should be prophesying. Amen? Yeah. But I'm saying like, the Lord is the Spirit. Can I stay right there? I think sometimes we read it too fast. If the Lord is the Spirit, Jesus is not here walking around, but the Holy Spirit is. So to the degree that you make the Lord, the Jesus Lord, you're actually walking with the Holy Ghost. Am I right? Now the Lord is the Spirit. Who's the, who's the Lord? Can we, you see how we don't think about it. Who's the Lord? The Lord is the Spirit. Who's the Lord? See, we're scared to say what the Bible said. Who's the Lord? Do you have the Holy Ghost? See how much trouble, see, the enemy will try to keep somebody from getting saved, right? Because all you got to do is get saved to say, Jesus, help. <laughs> Am I right? Come on. I turn to you. I repent, right? But we don't, but he don't want you to get saved enough. Come on. Where the devil leaves you. And you begin to live completely before the Lord in every area, attempting to live correctly. Surrender to the Spirit. Yielded. Somebody say yielded. You're not going to find a perfect person, but there are people yielded, people not yielded. When you're not yielded, you're not walking in the fullness of what God called you, and you're literally opening the door for the thief to come into your family. You are the one responsible for that. To the degree that we are able to follow Jesus, we are able to make followers of Jesus. I want to stick right here. Ready? Say with me, the Lord is the Spirit. Watch the next part. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is? Wherever you're not letting the Holy Spirit be, you're not free. And I'm saying this, I'm, I'm serious. Because I know what it's like to struggle with things. And it's like, we're in a process. We're in a process. Am I right? We're in a process. And so don't give up because you're struggling in an area. But understand that the Bible is true. The Bible says if, the, if you let the Holy Spirit in there, you'll be free. Y'all okay? I'm not going to take forever, but I just want to stay long enough. Say with me, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Are you letting him go in every area of your heart? But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed. Say with me, I'm looking to Jesus. How many know that you can't look to Jesus if you have religion covering your face? The Bible says we are unlike Moses. This is in previous verses. Go study 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Unlike Moses who had a veil on his face because the glory was fading, we don't have the veil because somebody died and removed the separation, and you can literally look to Jesus right now, and you might look right into heaven. I have. Do you believe what the Scripture says? The Bible says there's no separation. So don't make a man into God. Don't make a pastor or any leader or a televangelist. Make God God. Amen? And, and, and look at him with unveiled face. What happens, church, when you look at him without, without a veil? We're being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit. Why? Because we want the Holy Spirit to have room in our church. We want the Holy Spirit to have room in our house. We want the Holy Spirit to show up in our car on the way to work. Man, we've been showing up on the job site with tears because the Holy Ghost came in. Karen said, when I got in the truck, the Holy Spirit came on me. And I was like, that's what it's about, man. Come on. Some of y'all are getting around your friends and the spirit of death and the spirit of murmurs getting on you. 
I want to shake the monkey off my back, shake the hater off my back, and I want the Holy Ghost to come upon me. Let the Lord be the Spirit. Let the Spirit be the Lord. Amen? Does that make any sense? So to the degree that we are able to follow Jesus, said we're able to make followers of Jesus. Jesus becomes as real through us, only as real through us as he is inside of us. At the beginning of the church, the Lord began to really deal with me on this. He was like, you're going to step into a different mode of making disciples. And until now, you have, you have introduced people to Jesus, and they have gotten saved, delivered, and healed. But from now on, you must reproduce what you are. And you can't reproduce what you are unless Jesus becomes more real inside of you so that he becomes more real outside of you. Can somebody give God a praise for that? Jesus has commissioned us to be leaders, and we've barely even scratched the surface of leadership. Has Jesus not commissioned us to be leaders? And we're talking about, I don't think that's right what he said about the Bible. And we're over here talking a bunch of smack on, listen, and Jesus said, I didn't even tell you to do that. You're being commissioned into a into man's agenda, but I've commissioned you into the agenda of Jesus. And what is that? Matthew 28, you ready to say it with me? And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on the earth. Why? Because he went to the cross. So therefore, somebody say therefore. therefore. Here's what it's there for. Make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Man, I was about to go off on something. I'm just going to pull back on that. <laughs> y'all already know some of y'all. So, <laughs> say it would be the best leaders... Spend time with Jesus every single day. Come on, give God a praise. A person may seem like, I feel like God was saying this, a person may seem like a powerful leader or a powerful world leader, but if you watch over time, they don't make lasting impact unless they're following Jesus. Because you see, leadership can be a gift also. You can see people just follow so and so. Oh, they're so popular. No, they have a leadership gift. And if they let it go to their head, they're going to uh, they're gonna be more worried about the praise of men than the praise of God, and they're going to fall in pride like Lucifer did. Yielding to the divine nature frees us from the dictates of our senses. Amen? A person may seem like a great leader, but if he's not following Jesus, he, what he does is a waste. He will die one day, and all of his works will be burned up in the fire. Bobby Connor said the division, that God told him the, the definition of profane, that which is not initiated by God. Is that not a good word? Number five. Now, I want to look at something that I, I, I stole it from my brother, John Bevere. <laughs> In the book, The Awe of God. If you get a chance, go get the book of Awe, The Awe of God. It talks about the fear of God. So good. So good. Uh, say it with me. As we surrender to the divine nature, we're able to resist the cravings inside of us that fuel the fear of man. Can we deal something with something, guys? How many think that it might be possible that we are more concerned with what people think and it's causing a stumbling block sometimes uh, with us following Jesus? And, and this is a weird thing because it can happen to you as a new believer, but it's even happening to leaders because, see, we've got to draw a line somewhere because we have to do what God said, amen, and we have to not break people off, feel me? But yet we have to do, we have to follow Jesus and not what men say because what's highly praised amongst men is an abomination to God. Is that right? So let's look at 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4, because we're nearing the end. We're almost done. The last two points are like super quick. Y'all with me? 2 Peter 1, 3 through 5. Everything we could ever need for life and godliness. I think I would be, I'm listening to anybody else. I, 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 my ears are turned on. Everything we could ever need for life and godliness has already been deposited in us. That can't be right. Is that right? Is that right? Come on. Is that, could that be right? Man, somebody ought to get, get Pentecostal about it. Is that right? I mean, come on, man. It's already inside of us. By his divine power. Somebody shout power. For all this he has lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing him who has called us by his name and, inv and invited us. Really? You're inviting us to come to you, God, through a glorious manifestation of his goodness. Man, somebody got to stop and give a praise fit on that. <laughs> come on. This is the Passion Translation, TPT, baby. You ready? As a result of this, he has given you a magnificent promises. Somebody say the Bible. That are beyond all price, 
so that through the power of these tremendous promises, we can experience partnership with the divine nature by which you have escaped the corrupt desires that are in the world. And he's talking about the various lusts that we have. That's the Greek uh, word for that word, desires. We didn't put it on the next verse, did we? So uh, how many realize that, that what's happening in the world is between you and God? It's between you and God, man. Nobody can, make, can change or make you do right. Nobody can make me do right. I could just fake it out on you. I could just fake you out. But see, between me and the Holy Ghost, man, behind closed doors, I got to say, Lord, that was wrong. What I did. I want to partner with your divine nature. Help me to get it right in this area. And see, as I'm getting it right in certain areas, how many of you know what I'm talking about? As you're getting it right in certain areas, he's unhooking you. He's unhooking you from something. I don't know how else to say it. He's unhooking you from something that makes you crave human approval called the fear of man the fear of man is the antidote for the fear of god john bevere said that yielding to the divine nature frees us from the dictates of our senses john said that we are empowering we are say it, we're empowered by the holy spirit and the word of god to yield to the divine nature y'all saw how that scripture was saying that lord we just give you praise for your word what an amazing thing lord what an amazing thing that you said lord Self-preservation is the core motivation to be perceived favorably by others. That's something John Bevere said. I said, man, I got to quote this dude, man. That's fire. So say it with me. Say it with me. Get it, get it, get it deep. Self-preservation is the core motivation to be perceived favorably by others. Well, my friend said this. I think I'll jump in here with them because I don't want my friends to not like me. And before you know it, you're caught up in a mess. Come on, am I right, guys? Don't let the devil steal from you what God has planned for you. Amen? The antidote to the fear of man is the fear of God. Amen? Okay, we're, we're, we're closing. We're closing. How many know that, and John Bevere said this, David, it was said about David, David messed up. Okay? David committed adultery. David had the man killed. And everybody's like, well, I don't like David now. Do you know what God told David? See, David had the man killed that was the woman's husband. Because he didn't want to be perceived by men as somebody that wasn't right. So he had the fear of man. Even David did. Now, David wasn't saved, so y'all don't go knocking David down. Because how well did you serve God before Jesus died for you? You didn't. So that's why God loves David. Because David had all odds against him, and yet David was a worshiper, and David wanted to follow God. Did you know, how many know what the curse was that was told about to David? The sword will never leave your house. My God. Because of the fear of man, the sword will never leave my house. Man, that's deep, man. How many know what happened to Saul? What happened to Saul? He lost his entire kingdom because he wanted to appear that God was still with him. He wanted men to think he appeared a certain way. Somebody say the fear of man. Man, tell me that's not make your hair stand up. Number four, number six, whatever number it is, I can't see it. Number six, <laughs> I told Reese, I was like, I'm reading this chapter out of the book of all of God, and it's called Enlightenment. And he was like, huh? He was like, I got that book. He's like, you mean entitlement? I was like, I don't know, whatever it said. <laughs> no. It's because I'm listening to the book, but when I looked at the subtitle, it's little small on my phone, and I was like, Enlightenment, I'm enlightened now by this revelation. It works. <laughs> Say it with me, entitlement <laughs> is the opposite of the fear of God. Real quick, real quick, and we're closing right now. Can the worship team come forward? Can the worship team? I feel like God said entitlement is a big issue in our generation. Can y'all can y'all say amen to that? Can I say this? How many of y'all, I don't want to mention ages because, but like from my age group, and I'm about 35, from, from my age, <laughs> like if I look back 10 years, I'm like people get more hypersensitive and offended and mad. Am I right, George? Have you noticed the younger generation? So, like, and then the, the generation before, that is even more like, like a porcupine, like, shh, like, don't tell me what I don't want to hear, because then you're saying you don't like me. Guys, we have stumbled so hard into entitlement. Entitlement saying that I deserve special privileges. Is this okay for me to say this? Is anybody, I know somebody already got offended. I can feel it. Listen, I'm serious. 
Entitlement, guys. We don't realize it has gripped a nation. Give me another paycheck and I'll throw my beer can out in the road. What are you talking about? You want to trash the land that somebody dies so that you can live free? Because I know right now a Mexican that just told me the other day that they've got the cartel, and I don't care, the cartel working with the freaking uh, uh, the uh, immigration to make Mexicans pay the cartel to live in Mexico. And if you don't, they won't kill you. They'll kill somebody that loves you, that you love. So you can stay alive and grieve and do what they say. You want to complain about the American government? What if you didn't have nobody protecting you? You would have cartels running all over you. Y'all, y'all getting quiet, man. We're complaining about the government, and if you didn't have a government, somebody said, why you got the flag up? You want to know? You don't even want to get me started on that. Because you want to go live in a country that doesn't have any government? Go to Somalia. We'll go ahead and have a funeral before you, before you even get there. Don't complain about government. Be the solution. Amen? Don't complain about the police. There's good police. There's bad ones, too. And just like there's bad, there's bad, there's bad preachers, there's bad, and you, come on, come on, right? You can't say, well, I don't like black people. That's pretty stupid. There's a lot of different people. You can't say, well, I don't like white people. They're stuck up. How many do you know? No, y'all getting so quiet right now. Why are we getting, y'all getting offended? I know, I can feel it. You, you realize that, that, that we don't, we don't trust people that are not like us. It doesn't mean that they're bad people. Amen? Okay. Lastly, number seven, Jesus laid down. I feel like this is important for deliverance. Please hear me. This is important for deliverance. How many know we need to be delivered from demonic spirits? I ain't even, I'm not kidding. Jesus laid down his rights on the cross, his rights. I want to ask you a question. Do you know that the Bible tells you that Jesus laid down his rights for you? Do you know that Jesus laid down his rights? He didn't have to die for you. He didn't have to leave the throne of heaven and die for you. He gave up all of his rights. How many know that entitlement has to do with, I have the right. This is what I like and what I don't like, and that's my right. How many know that entitlement is the opposite of the fear of God? Say with me, Jesus laid down his rights on the cross. If Jesus is our leader, we must lay down our rights. Can we stand and pray? Can we stand and pray? I believe that God is trying to break darkness off of us. And I believe that God's trying to launch us into, uh, into preachers, into, into ministries, into, into people that, that, that stand for truth. Amen. How many think that God's probably trying to use you, come on, to speak truth? And, and, and Sheldon, I felt the Lord say that he hasn't forgotten about your call and that you are called. And, and, and to dig in to what he's called you to do. Because I, I felt that a word for you. How many believe that you're called, that God's called you? I'm serious. He's called you something. So constantly, guys, how many know that sometimes you're doing something? We're, sometimes it's hard to forgive somebody. You have to keep forgiving them. But how many would pray with me right now and decide that not only today, but as a lifestyle, I'm going to lay my, my rights down. That I could take up the rights of Jesus. Amen. So, Father, we pray right now. Just say with me, Lord, I lay down my rights. Say with me, Lord, I can't walk with my rights and Jesus' rights at the same time. Jesus laid down his rights. Come on, say it. And I lay down my rights. I will live according to your word. In Jesus' name, fill me, Jesus, with all authority. You said all authority has been given to me. Now go make disciples. Say with me, Lord Jesus, help me to come under your authority. Help me to walk in your authority. Say it with me. Lord Jesus, help me to not waste my life. I want to make an impact. I want to make disciples just like you said. So I want to pray for you. Father, we pray your glory fill the air. I pray that you would resurrect callings. I pray that you would break off devils. I pray, Lord, that you would would inspire us with a revelation from heaven of the absolute importance of our life in planet earth. We pray that in Jesus' name. Come on. Amen. Is anybody excited about giving to a deliverance church, a healing church, a a Bible preaching church? Come on, uh, an imperfect church. All right, real quick, I'm going to give you 25 verses for giving. Y'all ready? (laughs) Malachi 310. Are y'all ready? Is that Malachi? (laughs) Come on, somebody shout with me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says who? 
says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven. I didn't know those windows of heaven, did you? And when they open, then finances change. Shout it with me, the windows of heaven. And pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough for you to receive it. Have you ever seen that kind of blessing? Come on, shout it would be the next part. And, say and, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. You mean to tell me there's a devourer running around eating up my finances? Come on, I had to repent one time because I'm the pastor and I'm like, man, I missed my tithe a bunch of times and my finance got screwed up and God said, well, go repent. So I've tithed since a little kid, but sometimes you get behind or whatever. And I got in front of the whole church and said, I'm sorry. I have missed a bunch of it. I believe the Bible, and I will always stick to the Bible. Somebody said, well, that's old covenant. That's not new covenant. Yeah, Jesus affirms the tithe in the new covenant. I mean, you ever thought about reading the Bible? So, so but God spoke to me, and he said, rebuke. He said, the devourer. And then my, my pastor, Pastor Ron, said, everybody, every pastor should have a pastor, said to me, it's the devourer. And I was like, oh, my God, that's out of, I think, Malachi. We've said it like 10,000 times. And, and so immediately I came into the church. I rebuked the devourer. And as God is my witness, we saw triple, double and triple the income from that day forward. It has not ceased. As God is my witness. Why are y'all quiet? In my personal life and in the church. Is there anybody here that's ever seen God back you up financially? I mean, look around, man. You cannot deny this. So I didn't, wasn't going to give this verse today. I just wasn't, and I, I felt like the Lord told me to, and I was like, I'll do it another day. I've said this verse a lot. And then I felt like the Lord was like, give the verse. So I'm like, somebody needs to hear this verse. So if it gives somebody one person breakthrough and, and makes 10 other people mad, then I don't care. Thank God for the breakthrough. Amen? <laughs> Can y'all say it with me? I will rebuke the devourer. Who said that? The Lord said that. It's between you and God. You know what I'm saying? For your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground and shall not, uh, what does it say? Y'all read it for me. You, what is your vine? That's your business. That's your finances. That's contracts. Does anybody, has everyone, have you ever taken the Bible and made it personal? And the vine will not, fear to, will not fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Can somebody give God a praise? We're going to go ahead and release the ushers. We release the children for Children's Church. Bless you, Lord. Thank you for the giving. Thank you for the givers, God. Thank you that you would multiply the seed as you have promised, God. Come on. <laughs> Come on, lift up your hands. Somebody say it. 